What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, it's your homie, Futuristic Mike, and I'm back with another PowerBook 2 Ghost video if you're new. Now, this is going to be my review and recap for PowerBook 2 Ghost Season 1, Episode 9. If you're a fan of power, if you love power, hit the like on this video. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you're finding me, subscribe and turn on those post notifications so when I post videos on PowerBook 2 Ghost, you get them. Now, this episode did very well. You go online and look up ratings for this episode, and it's at 9.4. This is the highest rated episode so far this season. It's even rated 0.1 more than episode 8. But I thought episode 8 was a little bit better than this episode. That's just my opinion. But so far, episode 9 is the highest rated episode this season. The description for this episode reads... After the head-on collision of Tariq's worlds at homecoming, the campus is hot, causing problems as he tries to settle up on debts. Now, I thought it was a solid episode, man. I really did. A lot of stuff went down in this episode. I gave y'all my quick thoughts video. Now, I'm just going to go in with the full-on recap. We're just going to talk about it. Now, when the episode first starts, we see Kane, and he's with Lil Guap, and they're in some factory, some warehouse, or wherever. I don't know where they're at. And they're cutting up bodies. Kane is cutting up bodies like he's been doing this, you know? Like, he knows exactly what he's doing. We know Kane is crazy, but damn, he's really cutting up bodies. That's some cartel-type shit. So we know Kane is real crazy, man. This boy is crazy as hell. Then we get to Tariq, and he's just waking up. He's getting a text from your boy 2-Bit or should I say peace out emoji, and he's saying, you know, 50k this time for saving your bitch ass, and Tariq gets up, he goes and looks in his stash, you know, he doesn't have enough money, so he has to figure out a way to go get some more money. Next, we get to Paula and Davis, and they're in some hotel room, you know, they just got done probably sleeping with each other, and they just talk about business, about the case and everything, and thank God we didn't see them smashing again. We already seen them smashing once earlier in the season. We don't need to see it again. You know, Paula, she's a beautiful woman. But, you know, I don't like seeing nobody else like I liked seeing Angela and Tasha. You know, they really showed them getting down in the first power. And I like seeing that. But we already got enough sex from Carrie and Jabari in this season. So we don't need to see nothing else. Next, we get to Carrie, and she's waking up with Zeke. So Zeke is spending the night with her now and stuff, and Carrie notices the bruises on the side of Zeke. So Carrie, you know, questions Zeke about where them bruises came from, and he doesn't want to tell her, but then eventually he tells her, and he tells her that, you know, he went out with his teammates after the basketball game. They went to a club, and then he got jumped by some gang named GTG. Next, we get to your boy, Laz Alonzo, and I was so happy to see him, although I gotta say, I'm kinda disappointed because I thought maybe he was gonna be playing some dude involved in the streets. You know, we knew he was gonna be in Power Book 2 for a long time. We just didn't know what his role was gonna be. A lot of people thought he was gonna be some drug dealer or something, you know, some kingpin, but, you know, he's just a cop, and he wants to get to the bottom of why the hell there's a body in the Stansfield pool? You know, people are saying that it's an accident, but he seems to think that the kid was murdered. Laz Alonzo can't really be on Power Book 2 Ghost like that because he has a full-time job working on the boys. And if you guys don't know what the boys is, make sure you guys go check that out because that's one fire-ass show. You know, I still didn't even post my review for the season finale or nothing of The Boys Season 2. I'm going to get to that. You know, I just been working on so many other shows, but Laz Alonzo, he's involved with the boys, so he can't really be on this show a whole lot, but at least we got an appearance from him in this episode, and I think he's going to be in the finale as well. Now, Jabari and Carrie, they don't want to hear none of this. They're like, man, you need to quit coming in here accusing our students. I mean, Jabari really was not having it. He didn't want to hear nothing your boy Sam Santana had to say. But they said they'll arrange to meet with each student and talk to them individually. Now we get to Monet and Drew. They're at the bar. And Drew mentions Kane. He says that Kane has always been the leader of everything before. And he's not used to doing it. 
and Monet tells him never to mention Kane's name again. And then we see Tariq walk in. Monet gives him the product and it's a lot more than what he's used to and it's bricks of cocaine. You know, he was only moving weed and pills and stuff. Now he has to move this coke. Next we get to Tariq and he's talking to Tasha on the phone and he tells Tasha about an expert witness that they're going to be taking to the stand because that's what Davis told Tariq on the phone because Tariq told Davis earlier in the episode that you know he didn't have enough money to pay him this week so Davis lied to him and said that you know he had an expert witness and at the time he really didn't have an expert witness at all he will have a witness later on though and we're gonna get into that here in a little bit now next in class you know Jabari brings up Frankenstein he brings up how he was a monster and stuff and Lauren voices her opinion in the class saying how she thinks certain people are monsters and stuff she says she feels like people who are in prison for certain things are monsters and Tariq is like oh so my mom deserves to be in prison and he gets mad at Lauren so they meet out in the hallway and basically Tariq just tells Lauren to leave him alone you know he's pissed off at her he was not feeling what she was saying in the classroom and she said to him that murderers and drug dealers deserve to be in prison so once she finds out what Tariq is really doing and who he really is you know she's not gonna mess with him at all because she straight up said how she felt and she doesn't mess with murderers or drug dealers at all and that's exactly what Tariq is you know he's murdered people and he's a drug dealer next we see Tasha in her cell and her cell is getting ready to be tossed so they're gonna be coming in and searching her cell and then the guy that originally gave her the cell phone that Lorenzo sent, you know, he says, hurry up, give me your burner. And she doesn't really believe that this is legit. And the dude tells her that Lorenzo sent him her way. So finally, she gives the dude her phone and this saves her from getting in trouble. Next, we see Steven Ott come and talk to Sax. And this was all part of their plan. You know, they wanted Tasha's cell to be searched so they could find a burner to prove that she's a queen pin, that she's making calls from jail and stuff, and they failed. Or I shouldn't say they failed, Sax failed. You know, Steven Ott, he didn't have nothing to do with it. It was Sax's idea. Steven Ott is getting so sick and tired of Sax. He is sick of his shit. Next, we see Carrie. She's in her office and she's looking up stuff, you know, about Zeke's family. She's trying to figure out who GTG is. And then she finds out that Lorenzo is locked up. For 25 plus years she finds out that he was involved with gtg and gtg is part of the reason why he got locked up she finds out all this information then jabari walks in and they ask each other if they found out anything and of course they both lie to each other you know jabari looks at the picture with zeke and jabari notices drew in the picture because obviously you know jabari followed tariq and seen drew but of course the two professors are lying to each other and this is nothing new man they're always lying to each other now next we see drew come to see kane and drew wants to know what the hell is going on man he wants to know why kane is acting the way he is you know why he's just not trying to be loyal to the family he sees that little guap is alive he's like look man why is that dude still breathing why did you not body little wop Kane says because Little Wop is loyal, but that's kind of bullshit in my opinion. You know, if he was loyal, he would have never went and tried to blow Zeke's knee off. So in my opinion, no, he's not loyal. But Kane, he's greedy. He just wants some of that extra money because Little Wop has to give him half of everything. You know, part of me likes Kane a lot and part of me don't. I don't like the way he is acting. But then again, you can't blame him. You know, he doesn't want to be left out of his family. So that's why he's acting the way he is. I still don't think he needs to be acting like this. He should have never tried to kill Tariq. But Kane is a wild boy. Like I said before, he's wild. And Kane's going to do what Kane wants to do. There's no talking Kane out of nothing. Next, we see Monet talking to Drew. And Drew is saying how he basically does not want to be doing all this. And that he wanted much more than this drug dealing shit. And Monet says... You think I didn't want more than this for you? Cause I definitely did. But now Kane is out the picture and I need you. This family needs you. So Drew was like, okay, I know you're right. So basically, you know, Drew's gonna be running things now. Next we see Davis 
meeting his client, Tasha. And of course, he's lying to her because Tasha says something about the expert witness and Davis doesn't say anything. He says, look, if there's something you need to know, then I would tell you. I've never lied to you before, right? He's been lying to her this whole time. He's been trying to take Tariq down with Sax. You know, Davis is playing dirty. Next, we see Davis and Sax. They go to Epiphany's house. Actually, not her house, just where she's staying at the time. You know, Epiphany is flirting with Davis, saying how he's so fine and everything. And Sax, of course, wants to make a joke like she's talking about him. But basically, these two are trying to get Epiphany to go up on the stand and say stuff about Tasha. Not really, you know, talking bad about her, but more so incriminating Tariq, saying that Tariq was at the daycare and stuff like that so she doesn't want to do it but they said that they can help her get out of trouble because she's gotten into a little bit of trouble and davis promised that sax can get her off for her charges next brayden walks in the dorm room he doesn't want nothing to do with Tariq because Tariq be lying to his own homeboy but then Tariq pulls out all these bricks so of course brayden's face lights up he runs over there you know, they start chopping it up about business and they decide they're going to start moving this weight. And Tariq tries to dap Brayden up and Brayden isn't even ready to dap Tariq up yet. You know, he's still mad at Tariq. Next, Zeke is with Carrie. She tells Zeke that she knows about GTG. You know, she found some things out and she wants Zeke to go to the cops and to confess what happened. And he's not trying to do it. You know, Zeke knows how his family is. He knows what his family does and he doesn't think that's the best move and she just keeps on trying to talk him into doing this and he gets mad and leaves next paula goes to see tasha and paula isn't gonna tell tasha anything but then tasha's like look i know you're sleeping with davis so as soon as she says that you know paula turns right around and then they have something to talk about so paula ends up telling tasha about epiphany about how Davis and Sax are calling Tiffany to the stand and Davis's lying ass told Paula that her name is Dr. Epiphany Turner. So Tasha told Paula that she's not no doctor, she's a stripper. So then Paula told her everything. Next we see Stephen Ott going off on Sax yet again. He hates Sax so much, it's funny man. He's just trying to protect James St. Patrick's name. That's all he wants to do and Sax keeps messing stuff up. He's supposed to be nailing Tasha as the queen pin, and he's too worried about nailing Tariq for the crime. I understand why he's trying to do that. You know, he has evidence that Tariq is the one that killed Ghost, but he needs to stop worrying about Tariq so damn much, and he needs to do what Steven Ott says, or I promise you, Steven Ott's gonna burn his ass. We've been seeing Steven Ott go ham on Sax for episodes now and i mean episodes and episodes in a row steven ott has been dogging sax so sax better get with the program or he's gonna be behind bars next zeke has a discussion with monet about what happened you know with little guap and everything he said that his career could have been over with monet says that she wants him away from the business and he shouldn't be around and they have a nice little discussion and then she tells zeke to stay for the night he doesn't want to at first because he probably wants to go back with Carrie. And then Monet is like, no, you stay. You don't got nowhere else to be, right? So Zeke agrees to stay the night. Next, we see Sam Santana in the professor's office. And Carrie says something about what she found out, you know, something Zeke told her. At least that's what the watchers can assume that she did because, you know, she said that she knows something that happened off campus and Jabari said that you know that would not be relevant to the case and then Sam was like well I'll be the judge of that so then it showed Carrie like she was getting ready to say what she knew and it went to the next scene so I know she told everybody you know what she knew about Zeke getting jumped next we see Paula talking to Tariq and she tells Tariq exactly what Tasha said to treat Epiphany like he did Slim Paula wants to know what Tasha means by that and Tariq says she means just to stay far away from Epiphany. I literally thought Epiphany was going to be dead in the next 5 or 10 minutes in this episode. Next Carrie is going to her office 
and Monet is sitting in there. And Monet tells her straight up that whatever she knows or whatever she thinks she knows, she better forget everything right now or the first name that comes out of her mouth will be hers because she knows that Carrie is sleeping with her nephew, Zeke. She says straight up, you're effing him, aren't you? So Carrie looked absolutely spooked. So I bet she's gonna be quiet. I mean, if she don't keep quiet though, she's dumb because she has no idea who she's messing with. So she better shut the hell up about anything. Next, we see Tariq and Brayden. They're walking down the street and Tariq tells Brayden the truth for once. What? I was surprised that Tariq actually spoke the truth to Brayden. He told Brayden that Riley didn't really try to sleep with him. So Brayden got pissed off. You know how Brayden is. And then Tariq told him about Sax, how Riley is Sax's niece and that Sax probably sent Riley to spy on them. And Brayden said that he's seen a picture of Sax at Riley's house. So now Brayden knows the truth about Riley, but the question is, will he be able to stay away from her? Now, Tariq and Brayden meet up with Effie. You know, Effie wanted the coke from Brayden. She didn't want no dealings with Tariq. She wanted nothing to do with them since he played her last time in the last episode. But Effie has the cash and Brayden takes it. And then Brayden walks away and says to deal with Tariq. So Tariq and Effie have a talk and he tells her that he wasn't trying to play her but he got into some danger and he didn't want her nowhere near any of that and he was telling the truth she didn't believe him you know she can never believe him because Tariq has lied so many times to so many different people and she says that you need to accept the fact that you're a monster because I accepted the fact that I was a monster when I turned you in at choke because you know Tariq told her that he has to do something that his mother wants him to do and he doesn't want to do it because it's very bad. So she told him to accept that he's a monster. I'm just glad that Tariq and Effie ended on good terms in this episode. You know, she kissed him on the cheek and then she left. Next, Tariq goes to Epiphany's house and this is when I thought it was over with for Epiphany. I thought it was over for her. But Tariq decided not to kill her. You know, he decided to pay her off what I found crazy about this whole scene was Epiphany did not even find it weird that Tariq was there. You know, she just kept on talking to Tariq like it was all normal that he was there. She had no idea what he was planning. He had a gun, you know, underneath his shirt. He was getting ready to shoot her and she had no idea. And then she said, only if I had enough money, I would just run. So that's when, you know, Tariq got the idea to pay her off. And that's what he did. Next, we get to the courtroom and Tasha looks nervous as hell because she knows if Epiphany goes up on a stand that some stuff might come out. But Epiphany does not show up. Sax is getting mean mugged by Stephen Ott and then Sax says that he has something up his sleeve. So he leaves. He goes into the bathroom. Him and Davis have a talk and it gets heated. And then, of course, Sax says that he knew he couldn't trust Davis and he says that he's gonna take him down. They say they're gonna take each other down. And next we see Davis talking to Paula in the courtroom. Paula says that she knows everything, you know, about Epiphany, about what Davis has been doing behind her back. Davis tells her the reason why he was doing all that, why he was working with Sax. And she just doesn't trust them no more. She says she wants nothing to do with them. Then next, Sax says to the judge that he wants to call Tariq St. Patrick to the stand. And the judge says that it's okay, so they're gonna get a subpoena for Tariq. Next, Tariq is talking to Tasha on the phone and she tells him that he's gonna be going to the stand. So Tariq is gonna have to cook up some stuff real quick. He's gonna have to think of some stuff to say up on the stand. Now next we get to Kane and he's getting ready to shoot Lil Guap again because he just feels like, you know, Lil Guap, he feels like he's loyal, but then again, he feels like he's doing stuff behind his back because Lil Guap comes in with the shipment, but it's Monet's shipment. Apparently, Rico gave Monet's shipment to Lil Guap and Kane thinks it's kind of weird, but then Lil Guap tells him that Rico wants them to take over the streets and cut Monet out. Next, we see Rico and he's riding with his boys. You know, he got like three boys in the SUV with him and he says, Look, it's New York. I haven't been to New York in a minute. So 
he's getting ready to shoot some shit up. You know, he got AKs in the car with him. Next, we see Monet getting ready to shoot Tariq. Tariq doesn't have her money. He doesn't have a single dime to give her because he paid Epiphany off and he told Epiphany to get out of town. So he doesn't have no money for Monet. And Monet's like, look, you know how this works. You don't play with my money. I need my money or you're dead. And Diana and Drew are trying to talk Monet out of it. You know, they kind of like Tariq. Well, especially Diana. She really likes Tariq. And Drew kind of likes Tariq. They don't want Monet to kill him. So they're trying to talk her out of it. And Tariq says, look, whatever happens to me happens to me. You can shoot me if you want. I've hurt enough people. And then it shows a flashback of Lakeisha, Tommy, Ghost, Reyna. All the people that Tariq has hurt. It showed a flashback of them because we know that Tariq has hurt all these people. He knows it his damn self. I think at this point, Tariq is just saying to himself, like, whatever happens to me happens to me. He knows that he's made some messed up choices, so he's really upset with himself, so he doesn't even care at this point. He said something about his dad, too. And Monet is like, what did you say about your dad? And before he can even say anything, the bar is getting shot up. Luckily, Monet knew something was up because she told everybody to get down. Now, Drew runs out for some reason. He gets shot, and Tariq saved Diana's life. Kane knew that Rico was coming to shoot them up, so Kane came to the rescue, or at least he tried. Monet didn't really want to see Kane, but then she told Kane to get Drew to the hospital. And then Monet says to Tariq that she's thankful that he saved Diana's life, but they're still not done with the business yet. Next, we see Paula meet up with Tariq, and Paula tells Tariq everything. She tells him that Davis was working with Sax that you know they were planning to put him in jail and everything and Tariq says why are you telling me all this and Paula says because I want you to take that son of a bitch down so Paula is done with Davis next we see Monet and Diana sitting in front of the hospital and Monet is all shaken up you know she's worried about what's gonna happen with Drew but Diana says that Drew is gonna make it that they just took him to surgery so then Kane shows up there and Monet doesn't want nothing to do with Kane. She's had enough of him. Monet even says that she'll put Kane down herself. And then Kane says, but look, you made me this way. Next, we see Kane talking to Ramirez. And Kane just gets pissed off because Ramirez isn't going to do anything that they talked about. Ramirez is not going to follow through with their plan. You know, Ramirez says Tariq isn't in the way after all. And he says that Monet still needs him. Kane doesn't like what Ramirez is saying. So he puts him down. He shoots him. He shoots him once. He goes to the ground. And then he unloads on him a whole bunch of times. He just goes crazy and unloads the clip. So rest in peace, Officer Ramirez. You got to remember, Kane did not like this dude from the very beginning. So we knew it was coming. Now next we get to Tariq and Tamika. And Tariq is hiring Tamika. You know, Tamika was already Tasha's lawyer before, and she fired Tamika because Tamika knew the truth about Tariq, that Tariq was really the one that killed James. At least she had her suspicions. So now Tamika says, put a dollar in my hand and we can make it official. So Tariq gave her a dollar. Now Tamika is Tariq's lawyer. Tariq has to go up on the stand, so Tariq wants to make sure he has all the protection he needs. You know, he's not messing with Davis no more. So it looks like he doesn't even have to pay Davis anymore. You know, he's like, screw Davis. But Tamika says, you need to tell me the whole truth. So Tariq tells Tamika, finally, that he killed his dad. And he says it's not because, you know, he's a monster, but because his dad was a monster. So this is gonna get interesting, man. We know that Tariq is gonna take the stand. We seen in the previews for the next episode, Tariq is on the stand with his red suit and everything. I can't wait to see how it plays out. It's gonna be interesting, man. I cannot wait. And Tamika is a hell of a good lawyer. But that's the end of the episode. I cannot wait to the season finale, man. I wish we were getting season two right after, you know, season one, episode 10, but we gotta wait probably like six months or something but yeah we gotta wait 
It's going to be crazy, though. This season finale is going to be absolutely insane. I cannot wait. What did you guys think of this episode? I thought it was a banger. It was an absolute banger. I did like episode eight more than this one, though. I already watched this episode like three or four times. I might watch it another time. But what did you guys think of this one? Comment down below. What are your thoughts? Comment your theories, thoughts, predictions, and everything else. Keep supporting your boy, and I'll be continuing to bring y'all Power Book 2 Ghost content in the future. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notification bell so you can never miss a video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me get out of here, y'all. It's your boy, Futuristic Mike, and I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.